When we are doing the E2 reaction on a ring molecule, we have to get our leaving group and a hydrogen in an anti-coplanar configuration. So using a Newman projection for reference, the leaving group and the hydrogen need to be in an anti-coplanar configuration, which means that they both need to be in axial positions. One needs to be in the up direction and the other needs to be in the down direction. If we have a cyclic molecule that has a tert butyl group on it, the tert butyl group restricts the, the cyclohexane molecule from undergoing a ring flip. It is too bulky to ever be located in an axial position. The tert butyl groups can only be equatorial due to their bulkiness. And because the tert butyl group is only allowed to go into an equatorial position, it forces all the other substituents on the ring to go into a specific position as well. So if we are looking at an E2 reaction with a cyclic molecule that has a tert butyl group on it, the only way for us to be able to accurately predict the products of the reaction is to draw a chair conformation of the molecule and uh, position all of the substituents on the molecule, starting first with the tert butyl group, putting it into an equatorial position. So I am going to put my tert butyl group into any one of the equatorial positions on this ring. My personal preference is to always think of the wedge position as up, which means that I wanna put the tert butyl group into any one of the equatorial up spots. I'm just going to go ahead and choose to put it right here. And doing that, I have made this my carbon number one. The other thing on that carbon is a hydrogen. So now for my carbon number two, and I'm not using IUPAC numbering here. I'm just numbering to keep track of carbons. Carbon number two, which is clockwise from carbon number one. So here's my carbon number two. On carbon number two, I have a methyl group that is on the wedge, which means it is up, so a methyl group right here. And I have a chlorine on the dash, which means that it is down. So there's my chlorine right here. So, and, and all the rest of the things on this ring are hydrogens. So I can go ahead and fill those in just so I don't get confused. So in order for this molecule, to undergo elimination, I need to have this chlorine in an axial position. It is currently in the equatorial down position and it is forced in that position because the turbidal group is forced, always forced, to be in an equatorial position. Because the chlorine cannot ever move itself so that it is in an axial position is always going to be stuck equatorial. I am not going to be able to get any sort of elimination taking place between the carbons in the ring. So it does not matter what the situation is on either of these two carbon atoms. I cannot do elimination in any one of these sites because my chlorine is never going to be in the correct spot. So even though I have, I do have a trans hydrogen over here, I still cannot do elimination between these two carbon atoms because my chlorine is only equatorial. Now it is possible for me to do elimination going out of the ring so I can eliminate between um, these these two carbon atoms, as I move out of the ring, and this bond has a lot of free rotation, I can definitely get elimination in that particular spot. So it's going to be difficult for me to actually sketch out a mechanism, and you've probably seen enough mechanisms of this that it's okay. We will get elimination taking place only between these two carbon atoms right here. Let's look at one more of these examples. So down here again, we have, this is a funny looking bromine. 
we have a cyclohexane that has a tert butyl group. And as soon as you see that tert butyl group, before you even really think about much of anything, you should just always immediately start by drawing your cyclohexane chair because you know that that is going to be something that is necessary. So I'm drawing my cyclohexane chair. I'm going to start by drawing the turbutyl group onto the chair because the turbutyl group can only be equatorial. So it can only be in one of these equatorial bonds. I like to always put my dash in the down position, which means I want my turbutyl group to be in any one of these down spots. I'm going to put it right there. So here is my turbutyl and there's a hydrogen on that carbon as well, and I'm going to call that carbon number one. Again, not IUPAC numbering. And then I am going to go ahead and go clockwise around the ring. So here's carbon number two, and there's carbon number three. Carbon number two just has a couple of hydrogens on it. Carbon number three has a bromine, and that bromine is on the wedge, and wedge to me means up. So there's a bromine that's sticking up on carbon number three, and that's a good bromine. That is a bromine that is on an axial bond, so it is in the correct position to do E2. So we're going to be, we are going to be able to get elimination with that bromine right there. Let's keep going around the ring. The next carbon will be carbon number four. Carbon number four has a tosylate leaving group, and that's on the dash, which is down. So there's our tosylate with a hydrogen as well. And then as we keep going around the ring, carbons five and six, those have just a couple of hydrogens on them. So what can we do in terms of elimination? Well, first of all, let's focus on the bromine. We know that the bromine is capable of being a leaving group because it is in an axial position and it's axial up, which means that it can eliminate with something that is axial down. Carbon number four does not have a hydrogen axial down, so we cannot get elimination between carbons three and four. Carbon number two has a hydrogen that is axial down, so we can get elimination in this site right here between that hydrogen and that bromine. So that would look like a double bond between carbon two and three. No change to the stereochemistry on carbon number one no change to anything on carbon number four. So there's one of our products, and that would be from the elimination of bromine. What about if from the elimination of tosylate? OTS is in an axial down position. Uh, it cannot eliminate in this site right here because the hydrogen on carbon number three is also down, and it's equatorial. We can get elimination between carbon 4 and 5 between the down leaving group and the up hydrogen. So our other product has a double bond in between carbons 4 and 5. No change to carbon number 3. No change to carbon number 1. And those are the two products for this reaction.